This is the MA1 crossbow, and what makes this flashlight unusual isn't that it's compact, or that it can supposedly output 800 lumens, it's that it has a built-in display that tells you how much battery power it has left, and how many lumens it's outputting. Well, we're going to test it out on this episode of Moondog Reviews. Let's start by taking a look at what you get in the box, and it's a small box, so this will be a quick unboxing. You got the flashlight itself, and let's see what's underneath this foam padding. Alright, inside this pouch is a mini Phillips screwdriver, a USB charging cable, a user manual, and a bunch of these little black plastic pieces. These are pistol mount adapters that we'll look at in a little bit, but let's take a look at the flashlight in greater detail. This is the Warrior Land Crossbow MA1 Compact Weapon Light, and you can see it is quite compact. It is less than three inches long, less than two inches tall, and less than an inch and a half thick. But it is well constructed. As you can see here, it's almost all metal construction, obviously not the lens, uh, but uh, Apart from the adapter plate, or the rail key as they call it, uh, which is polymer on the, on the top, and um, some panels on the activator switches, um, it's all metal. So, And it also has a built-in uh, piggyback laser as well as uh, a Cree illuminator. And it is an internal rechargeable battery, but the most unique feature is that it has a display screen. You can see here, when you turn it on, it shows you how much battery life there is, as well as how much, how many lumens it's outputting. So that is the first weapon light that I've seen that has that feature. In. So that is quite handy because if you've ever had to, uh, you know, store a rechargeable weapon light, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, sometimes some brands will have a, a colored LED, but this is so much easier to tell. Just quickly, you can just see how much battery life you have on here. And you can see it's already dropped to 500 lumens. Oh, that's nice that it tells you how many lumens that it has, but uh, it just lets you know that uh, how many, how, how bright it's outputting on there. And as I mentioned, it is rechargeable. It has, uh, it comes with a USB adapter cable and the other end is a magnetic charging adapter. Uh, and it is, um, the polarity is set by the magnets here. So you, you attach it to the plate, but you can't put it this way because the magnets don't want you to do it that way. You have to attach it this way, and that just keeps the right contacts on the right uh, contact plate there to charge it. And um, yeah, these are coming very more, more and more common, especially with personal uh, accessory items. Um, like the, I have a similar charging cable for my smartwatch, but they aren't universal. My smartwatch cable will not charge up this weapon light and vice versa. I've tested it. Um, but just something you should be aware of that you'll start seeing more and more of these cables, these kind of uh, charging uh, systems, but they aren't fully universally um, compatible. Uh, what is somewhat um, unique about this is that it does have a universal uh, plate system, or at least that's what they call it. Uh, this is their, uh, they call it the, uh, the rail key, and it comes with five other rail keys that uh, correspond to various pistol models, and it goes over quite a few different pistol models, Springfield, uh, Ruger, Taurus, Beretta, Smith & Wesson, um, H&K, etc., etc. Just go look through your manual and see which, which uh, rail key you want to put on there. Um, but it comes pre-installed with, uh, with the one that is Glock 19 and Glock 17 compatible, uh, as well as, uh, you know, other uh, standard 19 old not standard um, Picatinny. And um, you attach it via this clamp system, uh, just unscrew that little uh, cross bolt there using a coin or a um, flathead screwdriver and then just place it on and spring-loaded so it clamps down on your Picatinny or accessory rail and depending on the, your pistol this, uh, uh, this rail key places this uh, lug recoil lug on uh, your cross cut on your accessory rail so that it positions this particular weapon light as close as possible to your trigger guard and a good the appropriate distance to your finger to activate it. And it activates with a light press 
uh, on either one of these paddles. They, either one works whether you're using your trigger finger or your support hand. And uh, it also has a constant on. If you keep it pressed down, pressure on it, once you let go, then it turns off. Or you can just tap it to turn it on. And there, depending on the mode, if you have it on flashlight only mode, you can also double tap to turn on the strobe. Or on the flashlight only mode, if you press both of them at the same time, you get a low light or candle mode. So that's handy. Kind of wish they were reverse that because it, uh, it would be nice if uh, there was a harder way uh, to activate the strobe or a way to lock it out. I know for a lot of uh, folks out there with your particular training doctrine, strobe is not good. So, uh, but you know, um, that might make this a hard pass, but um, as far as I know, there is no way to, to lock out the strobe mode. So just so you be aware of that. Um, but you know, let me know in the comments whether you think uh, strobe having a strobe mode is good or bad, or if you're indifferent to it. Uh, as I mentioned, that has couple, three different modes that you can um, switch with this analog switch, and I like that. Uh, it's a very simple and, and intuitive way. There's a flashlight only mode, there's a flashlight and a laser mode, and a laser only mode, as you can see here. Now, laser is also. Um, you can also do it intermittent by just keeping the pressure on and pressure off. There is no candle mode for the combined, but there is a strobe mode. So there you go. And you can see that the laser, when the uh, the strobe uh, turned off momentarily, you can see the laser there for a second. Um, but let's go take this out. We're going to test out to see if the, the lumen output really uh, does match the 800 max. And we're going to give this a runtime test as well as an impact and uh, beep test. Next. All right, we've had this running for 30 seconds to warm up the battery, and we're gonna put it into my testing rig, which has been calibrated to a known 100 lumen lamp. And I'm getting a reading of 307, which applying the conversion ratio yields 1,228 lumens thereabouts. So, yeah, this thing is pretty darn bright. Okay, this is on maximum, 800 lumens, and we are looking at a hotspot about four, four and a half feet wide into the spill there. And I'm gonna try setting it on candle mode. That is on low power. And see what the laser looks like. All right, the beam is illuminating a fruit tree 15 feet away. You can reach out to the wall there 50 feet away, up the hill, and all the way to a telephone pole across the street 120 feet away. Industry standard drop tester from one meter or three feet I'm going to drop it from six feet twice onto rocks and dirt, so we'll see if it still works. I fully recharged the battery and we're going to see how long it can run in high mode. The manufacturer claims an hour, so we're going to do a time lapse starting now. And it's starting to dim. And wow, okay, almost exactly one hour of runtime. In fact, two minutes over. All right, before we start talking about the Warrior Land crossbow, I'd like to ask a quick favor. Hit that like button right now. It just takes a second. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything to hit the subscribe button. They won't charge you anything. But what you're doing is letting the algorithm know that these this is the kind of content you like to watch. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when I post my next product review video. So in terms of this product, um, well, it is refreshing when a flashlight actually outperforms the manufacturer's stated specs. Uh, and, you know, I've tested quite a few flashlights that came nowhere near what the manufacturer was claiming. And the fact that this was, you know, 12, 1300 lumens, well, you know, I have to hand it to Warriorland for under-promising and over-performing. That's always a better thing in my, in my book. Um, now, there is one feature that I wish they would change on this. There's no way to lock out uh, the strobe mode on this. And for some 
some users, strobe mode is something that they absolutely don't want. So I could totally, uh, totally understand if that's a deal breaker for you. Uh, so I would suggest to Warrior Land um, as a wish list for uh, an update on this particular uh, weapon light or flashlight that if you would build in a way to lock out the strobe mode or change how it is activated. Just doing a double tap um, would lead me to think that there, there's going to be a lot more accidental strobe mode activations than uh, a user would want. Uh, maybe do a triple tap or a quadruple tap or in my suggestion uh, make it the squeeze function so that you have to squeeze both paddles at the same time to get into strobe mode and change the activation of the low light candle mode. That would be the best uh, in my opinion. But again, that's my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think. And, um, you know, if you're interested in picking up uh, one of these, and I, I do like it, it's really well made, uh, you can find more information about this product as well as links uh, to where you can get it online in my full written review at moondogindustries.com. So definitely check that out. And thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, I'd like to know what you thought of this video. Leave me a comment or chat with me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, MeWe, Instagram, or Locals. And if you want to see all of my videos, go to MoondogIndustries.com.